session 29. And we ended yesterday with understanding how God, the name of God, the word of God, the kingdom of God is held up like a banner over our lives. And we call God Yahuwah Nisi. Uh, Exodus 17 verse 15, Moses built an altar and he called the name of the altar Yahuwah Nisi because at this specific place, Yahuwah has overcome the enemy in the physical but exploring and showing for us the deep meaning of overcoming the enemy in real life right in your daily life, in, in the, the life of Israel, in this kingdom life of a people that belongs to God against an enemy that wants to attack them and kill them in the wilderness while they are trying to follow this God, and trying to listen and obey to um, his voice. And while Moses and Hur and Aaron is trying to to hold up this authority of God by the hands of Moses. Even today, the authority of God is held up by the hands of Moses because it is the books of Moses we read to understand the authority of God. What God says is His will and what is not His will. What does He want His people to do and what does He not want His people to do and and how He wants His people to live so that they can be His people and a, a peculiar treasure and a kingdom of priests to Him. And this is the banner that is over the lives of all of Israel. So I just want to explore a little bit this Amalek that um, I showed to you represents not only the physical enemies of Israel in the ancient days, but in the spiritual, even in the ancient days, Amalek also represents the flesh and the disobedience and the rebellion and Israel listening to serpent language which is your flesh, which is your sinful nature. Satan doesn't really have to do a lot. Um, our sinful nature is actually, you know, he can just trigger it. He can just, he can just take his sword and, and punch you and attack you a little bit from behind, exactly like Amalek did. And the whole um, uh, um, uh, nation, the, the whole uh, tribe, all the tribes can just fall down flat on their faces um, in the rebellion, um, in front of the golden calf, or in fear um, because of Amalek and they want to turn back to Egypt, or because they're complaining in their flesh when they don't have water or food. It's so easy. Satan or Amalek or the flesh or this, the serpent kingdom doesn't need to do much to get us to be fearful of them and to be attacked by them and to be overcome by that system. But the only way to fight back is with the word of God. And here we have in the physical, the word of God sitting on the rock with his hands up in the air in prayer and representing um, the covenant that is being cut with Israel. Moses is representing that and, and in the prophetic that is Moses holding up Yeshua molding uh, Moses holding up the word of God and then when that is the banner over your life you can indeed overcome Amalek there's an eternal struggle an eternal struggle against Amalek so see this on both ancient history level as well as uh, spiritual prophetic level Amalek's enmity against Israel stems not only from the legacy as the grandson of Esau, because Amalek comes out of the loins of Esau. He's a grandchild of Esau. You remember Jacob is the grandfather of all of Israel. And Amalek, all the people of Amalek, um, has the grandfather of Esau. And you remember the story, how Esau wanted to crush the head of Jacob. And Jacob's hand was on Esau's heel, Yot Ekef. And how Esau wanted to kill Jacob. Remember the kiss of Esau? Do you remember all those things? <coughs> See that in the prophetic. How this spiritual kingdom that wants to crush the head of Israel. And wants to bite Israel in the neck. Using physical nations, physical people. But that is his ultimate goal. See that in the, prof the prophecy of Amalek. Um, the evil prophet Bilam referred to Amalek as the first among nations. This is in Numbers 24:20. 20. Remember when Bilam had to go and curse Israel. 
um, and that means that Amalek is the leading force of all e- um, evil. It was a huge, strong, powerful nation, just as Israel is the leading force for good, because Israel represents the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Israel, for instance, God says, you will keep my Sabbath day so that when you go amongst the nations, you will... Um, Declare that I am the creator who created in six days and rests on the seven. So Israel is always the one that has to shine the light of God in this dark world. So consequently, the struggle of Israel, that is um, as the salt of the earth and the light of the world, because we we have the light. The, the word is a light to my feet and a lamp to my path. And Yeshua is the light of this world. And the, the, the struggle between Israel and Amalek is really the eternal struggle between light and darkness, between good and evil. The current exile is referred to by the sages as the exile of Edom. Edom is another name for Esau. We've, we've shown you that in the long ago when we, when we handled Jacob and Esau. And the coming of Messiah is described by the prophets as the Savior that will ascend to Mount Zion to judge Esau's mountain and to judge the kingdom of this world and the, and the kingdom, the everlasting kingdom, will be Yahuwah's. Thus, when this passage concludes with a divine insurance of God, that he will erase the memory of Amalek from the face of the earth, Remember, that is verse 16 of Exodus 17. For, um, okay, so Moses built the altar and they called it Yahuwah Nisi because he says, His hand, Amalek's hand, is on the throne, on the Kesei of Yahuwah. Yahuwah will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. This is ultimately the war between God and Satan. Represented here by the war between God's people and Satan's people. So God promises that he's eventually going to erase the memory of Amalek from the face of the earth. And the import is that the time will come when evil will it eternally be destroyed. This word that Moses is holding up and that Moses is representing has destroyed Egypt. But that's not enough because Amalek is the darkness within and the struggle and rebellion and the flesh inside and that is where that is also where we need to um to face to face the giants and to face this struggle because it's not our struggle only when we struggle and fight we are actually representing our god and and we are struggling um against the the evil enemy that is standing up against God. So so every um, struggle that you have against the fleshly nature, against your me, myself, and I, against the the serpent language, whether from your own mind, your own doubt, your own fear, maybe your own rebellion. Oh, it's so difficult. I can just in my own life, I'm being reminded how many times am I listening to my flesh. Oh, Father, forgive us and and make us look up upon the hill where Moses is sitting on the rock of salvation and his hand is up in prayer to you and he represents your Torah. And we look up and we are reminded that that is the way in which we have our power and our walk. And we can fight against Amalek. Oh, and we can overcome in the name of your son Yeshua that is your word that is the rock of Yeshua and we can overcome in this name that you gave us from the beginning we can overcome the fleshly nature and by that we show the world how how good overcomes evil we, we show even the evil system we, we show Satan that you are the one that has always overpowered him And for a short while still, he might be in control. Amalek might think that he's winning, but but your um, trustworthiness of your word that proceeded from your mouth that cannot come back to you void is the one whose hands are up and we can overcome this eternal struggle. In small ways, we as 
mere human beings are doing this in your spirit and, and in obedience and trust in you, but in a huge way, your angels and your spirit and your word and you yourself are fighting with us against this Amalek, against this enemy. Because... um. There's, there's so many things. Um, the, the word Amalek is from the Strong's H6002. And it means the dwellers in the valley. <laughs> People that, that dwells in the valley. Like um, David says, your rot and your staff is with me. Even if I go through the, the valley of the shadow of death. Because in the valley there is the shadow of death. Amalek is dwelling in the shadow of death. Amalek is, is the representative um, prophetic picture of the serpent that wants to crawl on his belly in the shadow of death and eat your dust and kill you and make that you are disobedient to God and that you stop listening to him and that you are going to die because he wants to feast on your dust. Amalek wants to kill you in the valley. He wants to drag you down into the shadow of the valley of death. Ah. Uh, Genesis 36 verse 12. And Timna was the concubine to Eliphah, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphah's Amalek. And these were the sons of um, Adar's, um, um, this, this was the son of Ada, Esau's wife. Just this, this is just confirmation for you so you can see that Amalek is a descendant of Esau. Exodus 17 verse 8. Then came Amalek and he fought with Israel in Rephidim. So we, we remember what happened in Rephidim. There was disobedience. There was, um, uh, Israel didn't want to um, pray to God to feed them and give them bread and, and fulfill his promise. They didn't want to trust him. They just wanted to complain um, and be striving with Moses. So Amalek came. These, um, this dark, the dark kingdom comes to you when you are complaining Judges 5 verse 13 and 14. Then he made him that remains to have dominion over the nobles among the people. Yahuwah made me have dominion over the mighty. Out of Ephraim was there a root of them against Amalek. Beautiful in the book of Judges. How the judges are, um, what is the right word? Um, Worshipping God. That even from the times of Ephraim, remember, um, Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim and he fought with Amalek in the valley while uh, Moses and uh, Hur and Aaron was up on the hill. So the judges are confirming that the root of Ephraim, God is giving us dominion over Amalek. Deuteronomy 25 verse 17 and 18. Remember what Amalek did. To you on the way, just when you came out of Egypt. Deuteronomy 25. This is a history lesson for Israel and for us. Remember how they met you by the way, and how they smote you from the back, from the hindmost of thee. How they attacked you from the back. Even all of you that were feeble behind you, when you were faint and when you were weary, when you were tired and you were um, not strong anymore, you were weak. And Amalek came and they attacked you from behind because they don't fear God. Amalek, the enemy, the flesh, it's a rubbish demon that comes from behind. He, he doesn't even have the guts to attack Israel from the front, no. At the back where the old people and the children and the women and the sick ones and the tired ones, where they are walking, that's where Amalek will come to attack you. When you are tired and when you are weak and when you are not walking fast, following Moses to the promised land, when you are um, losing your your trust and you, when you become tired in, in your... <sighs> In your walk with God, that's when Amalek comes and he attacks you from behind. He's a rubbish demon 
that comes from behind and he attacks the feeble, the faint and the weary. And all of those that does not fear God, they fall into the hands of Amalek. Him that does not drink from the rock, from the living water. Remember we handled this in detail, how Yahshua is smitten and out of him comes the living water. And he says in John 7 verse 37, if any man thirsts, if you are um, uh, thirsty and you are weary and you are faint and you are walking at the back and you don't have strength anymore, anyone that's thirsty, come to me and drink from me. Him that believes in me, he will be like um, this person out of whose belly will flow rivers of living water. And then verse 38 of John 7 says that Yeshua was talking about the Ruach HaKodesh. When you drink from Yeshua, the word of God, your belly is filled with the Ruach HaKodesh and it flows out like rivers of living water. But they that does not drink from this living water becomes tired and weary and they walk at the back and Amalek gets them. Him that doesn't drink from the rock. Him that does not lift up the Torah of Yahuwah, the instructions, the kingdom principles of God. Him that doesn't look at Moses on the hill with his hands up in the air as long as Moses' hands were up. Israel defeated Amalek. Be careful and watch for Amalek in your life. Remember Strong's H6002. Amalek are the dwellers in the valley. And, they, and Amalek will catch you in the valley, in the shadow. When you are going through the valley of the shadow of death, whatever the situation is in your life, or in the country, or in the world, that's where Amalek is, is, is attacking you from behind. You don't even see him coming. Walk with Israel. Walk under the cloud of, uh, during the day and, and under the, the pillar of fire during the night. Stay within the, um, the wings of Yeshua. Stay under his wings. Don't fall behind. Amalek is going to get you there. Find your strength when you are weary and thirsty. Drink from Yeshua. And, and I'm talking to myself. Drink from Yeshua, the living waters, and let's find our strength there. And let's keep up on our way back to the promised land through the wilderness. We can do it as a nation. We can do it together. Back to Exodus 17 verse 16. Uh, Moses built the altar and he called it um, Yahuwah Nisi, for he said, Because his hand is on the Kesei, on the throne of Yahuwah, Yahuwah will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. When the nation of Israel is attacked physically, spiritually, prophetically, metaphorically, it's the same as attacking the very throne of God. I showed you how the uh, war between Israel and Amalek is, is actually the war between light and darkness. And that's why Moses says that the hand of Amalek is against the throne of God. It's the same as attacking the throne of God. And God himself will smite all those who attack his people. Remember the promise. Remember Genesis 12 verse 2 and 3. He said to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will make you just believe Abraham and Abraham did believe. I'll make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great, O Abraham, and you shall be a blessing. And all them that bless you, I will bless. But all them that curse you, I will curse. You are the seed of Abraham. You are Israel. Understand that God will curse Amalek that curses you, but you have to look at the word of God and drink from him and, and love him and obey him and walk in his light. And God will curse all the enemies against you, but you need to endure and you need to overcome in the valley of shadow of death where Amalek is waiting to attack you when you are not strong. We don't have to be strong. In ourselves, we are just not. That's why we overcome the enemy with the word of God. And that's why Ephesians 6 says the word of God is, a, is a, um, a, um, um, a very sharp sword. 
and you can attack the enemy with a sword, with a word of God. Find the verses that says, like this blessing that God gave to Abraham. Use this. If you come in a difficult situation, I will bless them that bless you and I will curse them that curse you. And let God be the one that takes revenge. And may you in your heart forgive and set free people that curses you and understand God has made that promise. And you look up at the promise of God and you overcome the enemy. He will eventually destroy the enemy. You cannot destroy the enemy, but you overcome him by the the word of your testimony. Exodus 17 verse 14, and Jehovah said unto Moses, write this, everything that happened as a memorial in a book, as a testimony, because you will, Revelation 12, 11, 11, overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. You don't love your life even unto death. You love God and you overcome the enemy by the word of the testimony. The testimony, just as Moses wrote down everything that happened in in Exodus 17, God said, write it as a testimony. It's a testimony for you and me today. Are you busy learning the testimony of the word of God from the ancient pages of Exodus, from the law and the prophets, from the law and the uh, witnesses? That is described all over the New Testament. Are you building your testimony of what you have seen and heard? Even if you were not actually there. It's a testimony for you as if you were there. Are you understanding yet that all these things are written for us so that we can testify of this God and of his kingdom and of his way? That this testimony is what will build you up so that you can withstand the deception and the temptations and the difficulties of the lawless, godless, Torahless world and the prince of this present darkness. Isaiah 8.20 To the law and to the testimony. If anybody doesn't speak according to this word, this law and testimony, it's because there is no light in them. You overcome the Amalek darkness with a light within you and the light within you is the word of the testimony from the law and the testimony the law and the prophets everything that God did to his people for his people through his people written for us as testimonies by all the prophets of the old testament confirmed by the prophets in the new testament you'll overcome the enemy with this testimony Luke 24 Verse 44, and he said to them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you. All things must be fulfilled, which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Can you see how Yeshua confirms that the testimony of these ancient ancient Old Testament pages is about him? He is the testimony. He is the word of God written in the law of Moses. That's why Moses, while his hands are up in the air, we overcome Amalek. So keep, help her and Aaron keep Moses' hands in the air. Help Yeshua spread his testimony, which is written in the law and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning him, the living word. Help that being lifted up and kept up in your life, overcome you, but also testify you to everybody else who needs this understanding. We learn from the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, from history and prophecy, everything regarding the Messiah, our Savior, our rock, our living waters, the word of God that he gave to us so that we might live through him. This is the testimony that we live by that we believe in, and that will help us overcome Amalek.